everybody welcome back to Law Hero my name is Jen and this is a video around the FE1 constitutional law paper which was very kindly sent on by one of my followers this is the last FE1 video I'm gonna do until November probably when I review what was asked in September so yeah I mean um, yeah I've been enjoying it but um, yeah it's 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 unbelievable uh, the energy eight subjects can sap out of one. Anyway, um, I have here my constitutional ebook, a very, very uh, slender for the constitutional paper. Um, so let's just get right into it. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. This was a, um, ca a case law question where you have to write on two. So he asked uh, Shatter v. Gearin, McChrystal v. Minister for Children, M v. Minister for Justice, and DPP v. JC. If it was me, I would have done McChrystal v. Minister for Children and DP DPP v. JC just because um, one is as regards. Um, McChrystal is as regards uh, referendums, it's quite a straightforward case and uh, DPP v JC was around um, exclusionary evidence and constitutionally obtained evidence. I just, I would find those much, much easier to recall. But again, I often advise both in the EU paper and in the uh, constitutional law paper not to do the case no question just because it's quite a draining question. Question two was an essay question. Compare and contrast the approach to Article 15 of the Constitution adopted by the Supreme Court in Lentiva v. Minister for Justice and in O'Sullivan v. C. Fisheries Protection Authority. Uh, that was the one around the licensing, uh, licensing for fishing boats down in uh, Cork. Your answer you should consider in particular whether there are any significant differences in the approach adopted and what the implications of any such differences are for the application of Article 15 in the future. Now that's interesting because, you know, obviously he's asking you your opinion and as I always say in constitutional law, um, this is the one subject where you do need to have um, a little bit of an opinion and you need to have thought a little bit broader um, about things. Um, so if you go to my chapter two, organs of the state um, where you have article 15 which is the legislative function um, of the Iraq um, Lentiva was around um, an immigration officer and if they could limit the duration of the entrance stay this was ultra virus the legislation because the the legislation said nothing about the duration of the stay um, so that's one thing and then in the other case that was also, there was a kind of uh, permission, it was involved a kind of permission where there was fishermen under recording the catch and this led to penalty points on their license which could be served without a criminal conviction as a standalone license. There was no mechanism to suspend these points and EU law did not require the standalone license. The question was whether the Minister had extra legislative function in creating the court acknowledged that within the EU legislation there was some scope for implementation. Principles and policies and peer legislation are to narrow the scope so that the powers of the particular authority are not unlimited and as such give guidance to the decision maker. Here the only thing was discretion of member states was the process by which the points would be allocated. This was incidental, supplemental and consequential and therefore constitutional as it is a choice that does not imply capacity to determine uh, policy. So this is much much more different because in the O'Sullivan case, um, there was a discretion as to how, whereas in the Lentiva case, there wasn't at all, which made it ultra virus the legislation. And how this affects the future, um, the future of Article 15 is that um, perhaps the legislator will be a bit more broad in how they word things in that they will allow perhaps the process, the how, um, up to, we'll say, how to take back a license of somebody um, rather than the granting of a license, which is much more, which is, which is arguably um, much more detrimental actually um, and the kind of incidental supplemental and consequential 
um, when you square that with the principles and policies test that's actually extremely broad so what you can see is that the length of the case took a narrow approach whereas the O'Sullivan case has now broadened the principles and policies test going forward Question three, in response to concerns about the long-term sustainability of pension entitlements. Okay, so this is, um, a pension would be a property right when you think about it. Equality, because you have to be over the age of uh, 30. It's all employers. Again, that would be very, very difficult. Uh, this is just basically like a broad brush approach, which would be very difficult to implement. Uh, question four is also property rights. It's a problem question. Question five is an essay question. It's a quote from Karen's V. McGuinness. Discuss whether and to what extent Irish constitutional law recognise a doctrine of non justicability to refer in your answer to relevant decisions from the Irish Superior Court. So, this is in Principles of Constitutional Law, which are in my chapter one. Question six is a problem question around uh, citizenship. Um, so, you would look into family rights uh, under my constitutional rights uh, question. Question seven is another essay question. Uh, the decision of the Supreme Court in Gilkurse v. Rogers v. Garda Commissioner is a death knell in the principle of open justice in Ireland. When you hear open justice, think of Article 34.1, that justice should be administered in public. So just an essay question on that. Question eight is a uh, problem question um, around costs for medical care. There are funds to charge these costs. She's initiated a claim. Before her case is heard, the Oireachtas enacts the capping of insurance costs. So this is a conflict between um, the legislator and the courts. And I have a lot of case law around that and the separation of powers as to constitutionality. So yeah, it was a tough enough uh, constitutional paper. Um, but if you had read my ebook, you would have been fairly well um, sorted. Um, I think the essays were much much easier than they usually are. Problem questions were standard but they were there was you know two of them were fairly similar I would have said three and four were fairly similar around property rights. So yeah if you have any questions please email me at info at lawhero.eu please follow along at, at lawhero IRL on Instagram and I'll see you in the next one uh, please like and subscribe.